Welcome to PCR. Today we are going to share some highlights about hypertension and stroke. And uh, I'm glad to be with you. I'm Atul Patak from Toulouse, France. And I'm welcoming uh, Felix Mafut from Homburg, Saarland. So uh, let's start. Uh, Felix, what uh, important landmark information would you like to share with our audience about hypertension? You know, overall for hypertension, we have had a pretty important study that has been published, which is the SPRINT trial. That was a trial in 9,000 patients uh, that were included in the United States. They compared two different treatment strategies, a lower threshold target blood pressure of 120 compared to a higher one of 135. And indeed, it figured out that patients who were tightly blood pressure controlled had a significantly lower morbidity and mortality. We had a session here at EuroPCR. Will that trial change your clinical practice? You were part of it. So Atul, what are your takes? Um, will it change your practice? Well, definitely. Really. I think uh, for me, uh, the trial shows that uh, uh, as a doctor, you need uh, to intensify your treatment. And SPRINT is a plea for fighting against uh, therapeutic inertia, whether by adding drugs or by using maybe devices to better control our patient by reducing also the risk of side effects. Uh, so ca talking about devices, uh, maybe uh, Felix, can you give us some uh, uh, or your views about uh, all these trials, uh, real life practice, uh, which have been shared uh, in, the, in the meeting. It's very interesting because we had uh, really interesting abstract sessions, real world experience that has been uh, exchanged from all over the world. We had colleagues from the United Kingdom who presented the UK experience with renal denervation showing a significant drop in blood pressure office and ambulatory over time. We presented the Global Simplicity Registry uh, where now Almost 2,500 patients are included with three-year follow-up in the first cohort of almost 300 patients and also there a significant drop in blood pressure is, uh, has been documented. And we kind of faced the problem with the one randomized control trial that was indeed negative or neutral at best in patients uh, with uh, resistant hypertension. You know, and we're trying to reconcile the evidence. We had an, another interesting session here at EuroPCR where all the different trials are ongoing and you might want to share some of these trials and the concepts that we are following according to the lessons that we have learned. Yeah, I think that uh, there was a very nice uh, period about trials going on in the field, uh, trials which are basically uh, looking into the devices which have been evaluated in the last years, taking into account what we have learned from uh, the methodology of previous trials and basically trying to show uh, sometimes in more moderated hypertensive patients with or without drugs, if uh, renal denervation could be a standard of care uh, by reducing uh, blood pressure measured in a correct way. And um, I think that uh, was a very exciting time for us because we are looking in the future with a maybe a more optimistic view. Is a glimpse into the future? What, what, what do you think? When will we get the first data out of these trials? Well, I think uh, if we are optimistic, maybe uh, starting to see some things uh, next year. And talking about the future, Felix, uh, are there some other devices coming up also? There are plenty of devices now developed, um, all of them targeting the sympathetic nervous or the parasympathetic nervous system. We have new devices for renal denervation. Chemical denervation by alcohol is certainly something which is of interest. But we're also targeting the parasympathetic nervous system. We had an interesting session on, on heart failure and neuromodulation in heart failure. We have external ultrasound to be applied to the kidneys, a completely non-invasive approach to achieve renal denervation. A randomized controlled study is ongoing there. 80 patients have already been included and we're eagerly awaiting to see these results being presented and I look really forward to see some new results at EuroPCR next year. So Felix, uh, basically if I have to wrap up uh, the results and what we have shared today, I think the first message is the SPRINT trial showing that we really need to intensify our blood pressure control in these patients by adding drugs or maybe by uh, looking in the future by the use of uh, renal denervation therapy. Second, all these registries are showing us that there is a real benefit risk ratio in favor of the therapy with not so many side effects and efficiency on blood pressure reduction. Third, I think that the future looks quite optimistic with new trials coming up in the field of renal denervation, but also new devices. 
Uh, more generally, I think that uh, uh, Europe this year was also a very interesting session this year, focusing on stroke and related outcomes. Uh, there were very interesting sessions about uh, structural valvular disease and uh, uh, trials uh, managing uh, left atrial appendage occlusion, neurovascular approach with thrombectomy at the level of carotid artery. So again, I think a very positive and optimistic session about new things coming up in the field of hypertension and in the field of stroke.